Welcome to Kiffin's Keep, an intellectual resource for the pillar and buttress of the truth, which is the church. This is a project of the London Lyceum, which is all about serious thinking for a serious church. I'm Jordan Stefaniak, president of the London Lyceum and host of Kiffin's Keep. And before we jump into the topic, as always, may I remind you, like the video if you even liked it a smidge. Uh, that gives me a little bit of encouragement, but also if you are serious about your likes and you like to, to make sure that you're giving them out appropriately, that does tell me what content is more enjoyable and helpful to you uh, versus what's not. Do also subscribe to the channel so that you get our content to you all the time so you don't miss any of the quality stuff coming here, whether it's hit us with us, me with Kip and Keep, or generally particular or just the general London Lyceum content, it'll always be there. And do drop a comment. Let me know what you think. Uh, disagree, agree, either way. I love hearing from you guys and I appreciate it. This particular episode, I, I've got some other stuff queued up and I plan to talk about, but this one I wanted to jump on now just because it's on my mind, and that is institutions uh, particularly that relate to the life of the mind. This isn't going to be a, a knockdown, give you all the answers, uh, and cover all the bases, but I think it, it might be a nice opener to think about some of these topics because I think if anyone is alive and reading the news, they will look around and they will quickly see that universities, at least in America, are dying. Uh, they may not be actually buried quite yet, but for all intents and purposes, they are the walking dead in many respects. There's no real life of the mind there anymore. So let me give you some examples of what's been happening over the last, I don't know, two, three, four, five, six years. Places that I think of, I think of Liberty University, um, my alma mater that eliminated their philosophy program. You think of uh, more recently, Gordon Conwell as a seminary selling their their real estate assets. Um, now, obviously, these aren't these things aren't all equal, uh, but I think there's some common themes. And then you have some larger universities. Uh, more recently, West Virginia. What is it? They uh, they are eliminating basically. To me, it seems like most of their liberal arts sort of stuff. They're eliminating languages altogether, saying you know you can go learn it from an app or something like that. I think 32 majors in all are being eliminated, and 169 faculty are being eliminated. And then uh, recently, this is what spurred me to say, I, I'm, finally, I'm going to go ahead and just talk about this. I thought about writing an essay, maybe maybe I still will, if you guys think that would be useful. Um, West Texas A&M, they are no longer allowing uh, faculty to assign any resources to the students to reduce the cost of the education. And I, I just think a lot of this stuff is ridiculous or or is foolish or is reckless or is whatever it seen but it seems to me almost daily or weekly I, i'm finding out a new university or a new some sort of intellectual institution is reimagining its purpose and deciding it's no longer serious about being a life of the mind sort of location for the life of the mind so at this point in my mind i've always been sort of the guy who says Let, let's reinvest in the old institutions and rebuild them uh, make them beautiful again i still think there's a lot of value in that but there does seem to me that you come to a point where an institution is so diseased uh, that it is no longer uh, viable to be saved. And it is better to jump ship and cut cords and bury it than it is to try to, re to resuscitate a corpse uh, that has long been dead and decaying. And to me, it seems like significant numbers of institutions are in that boat. So a few comments on the old that I wanted to mention. That first piece... Sometimes it is best to start something new. My impulse personally is to revive and to encourage the old uh, because there are resources there, there are people there, there is something majestic about something old, that you, an aura, a brand that it's difficult to recreate and to cultivate on your own. Um, and there's a sense in which we are called to be stewards of what has been created and not just create new things. So there is a, a desire to save the old ones, but at sometimes they are too diseased to redeem. Now, some comments on why I think it is that so many universities and other educational institutions, particularly in America, are dying. I think some of it's obvious. People have said this uh, ad nauseum forever, but apparently the universities don't care or aren't paying attention. Um, one of them is just the administrative bloat that you've seen across the board, whether it's a seminary, whether it's a university, whether it's a college, it's 
incredible the number of administrative people that have uh, become part of what is necessary to run uh, the institution. You have significantly large executive salaries that you have to fund and pay for. You have, um, and with this administrative sort of takeover, you have non-faculty members who are doing curriculum development. You have, curri- like, a- there are actual positions called curriculum developers. Um, I think that's the, the particular title that most of them use. And they're, they, don't, they don't have PhDs in the particular area. They don't have a master's degree in the particular area. They're just random person who gets hired to do this to create the curriculum for the faculty. I think that's wild. I think that's insane. I think that's basically you are sucking every bit of life out of the institution that is supposed to be there. We completely forgotten what the purpose of an institution is. I mean, these administrators are also very much in the business world. I mean, you have businessmen who want to track every little activity of a faculty member and say, well, I'm spending $80,000 on this faculty member. I better be getting all my money's worth. They better be meeting with X number of students and giving X number of lectures. And that, that's just not how an institution like uh, of the life of learning works. And it's a fundamental misunderstanding of what that is and what it's supposed to be. So there's the administrative nature of a lot of these institutions is absolutely going to suck its life dry. I mean, you the lure of revenue from these administrators is always lurking. Um, the maximizing of the profits. What does it take to get the most money in the door? They don't care what people learn. The, the point isn't to actually educate people and help them open up their minds and ideas and push them and stretch them. No, that's not the point. The point is, how can I make the most money off of each student that comes in the door? That, to me is a recipe for disaster. Now, that's not saying that you don't need people who are financial conscious, who understand that things cost money and you have to make sure you have a balanced budget, et cetera, et cetera. You need those people. But a lot of these universities are being run by people who are not just saying like, let's make sure we dot our I's and cross our T's. It's very much bloodthirsty for as much revenue as we can get. And that's evidenced in the proliferation of online courses that are just, they're, they're, they're useless. I mean, it's little content dumps. Watch these lectures, um, take this multiple choice quiz and pretend to read this book and you'll get a degree. And I think that's just insane. But though, that's, that, I mean, that's cash cow for a university, right? You can make a significant amount of money when you pull out the faculty members they don't have to actually have a real teaching load. You just record their videos and voila, you can replay them. Even if they're dead, you can continue to play them and make money off of them. Um, the, the utilization of AI in creating course content and doing all these sort of things is designed primarily for revenue and not actually for the life of the mind and making sure that people are formed and challenged and become better humans. Um, so I think at, at bottom, we have the wrong people leading these institutions that are leading them in, in poorest directions. And I know, like, a lot of us don't want to talk about it, but sports really is a major issue for universities. Uh, the amount of money that is spent on, on them, and I, I understand you have donors and you have significant income streams from a lot of that from the top schools. So, yes, you can pay $50 million to buy out a coach. But that seems like uh, that's not the case for a lot of these other institutions they don't have that much money to buy out a coach. They don't have that much money to buy a new stadium, to build one. And they are borrowing from what the purpose of the university is to fund this extracurricular activity, which is just foolish. So at this point, in my mind, I think we really do need to turn our attention to building new institutions. And there's all sorts of other problems with old institutions, right? Um, there's a lot of them that have that have gone after just intellectual systems that are, are bankrupt and barren and have barred any sort of like actual critical thinking from the institution. And that too is a death knell, knell for it. But as far as building new institutions goes, there's a couple of ideas or thoughts that I had when I was just thinking about this tonight. And one of them is that the vacuum of leadership and and serious intellectual institutions that we currently have is both a good thing and a bad thing. It's a double-edged sword, right? Because 
in a vacuum like this, it does invite bad actors or people or entrepreneurs that don't have the sort of moral character and the moral vision and, and, and the really intellectual vision to build institutions that will last, that will actually serve a healthy purpose for people. They can build institutions quickly that feed on hot takes and feed on fear and feed on all sorts of banal things that will not ultimately produce and encourage the life of the mind. So there is a real danger in this vacuum that we're in that we begin to see more and more of these new institutions pop up that ultimately are not a net good. However, New institutions are necessary, even when we're not in a moment in a time where we need a lot of them, but we, though we currently are, there is a need for them. And in order to build a new institution well, and that it's something that's going to last, you need people who have vision. You need people who have uh, tenacity. You need people who have sort of a scrappiness, a, a know-how in a lot of different ways. You need people who are willing to give their time, their effort, and to sacrifice significantly to see institutions built, be built and to grow. And then you need funding to build these things. So there's a lot of stuff that needs to happen in order to build new institutions. And I think there's a real opportunity going forward in the decades to come to build new things, to fund new initiatives. There's a huge window of opportunity here. The future will be more nimble than the past has been. And yet, I still think these new institutions must remain focused on people and on community, on relationships. There is a power in presence. There is a power in place that is irreplaceable. There is nothing you can do to replace the power of being in a specific location, particularly a, a, an educational institution, that somehow just by God's design turns something in us and pushes us to new heights. And then it's the power of the presence of people actually embodied in their flesh around you, eating a meal, drinking, talking, and discussing ideas that pushes us and helps us to grow intellectually and grow, virtu grow virtuously. I mean, that I think that's why you find even in just the scriptures, the motif of eating together. There's something powerful about the meal, right? And, and it's not necessarily just like the food itself, but it's the power of the presence that you have as you share something together. And new institutions must figure out how to cultivate those things. The place and the presence, I think they are absolutely crucial and necessary to the true growth and future of the life of the mind. Particularly, I'm naturally... So I've been talking about universities in general. I've talked a little bit about seminaries, but I'm also just thinking just Christians in general. Uh, we need new institutions to, to, to help us to continue to preserve and steward the intellectual tradition that we've inherited and to advance it forward. In, in the coming decades, whatever that looks like, I think we need more new institutions. But we also need uh, some of the new ones that have been started to be well-funded, well-resourced, and well uh People need to be praying for them and people need to be sacrificing their time and efforts to serve them in different ways. It, it, the institutions don't grow by single personalities. And if they do, they will topple over and die ultimately because they are not set on a solid foundation. These sort of places are so necessary for us because they spur us to imagine further. They spur us to develop relationships. They spur us and, and they give us the resources, the intellectual resources, the practical resources to go out and act and, and to make change in, in our world. So the last thing I want to say here, this has been a little bit short smattering some ideas on institutions old and new. I think the London Lyceum fits under this new institution. So I, I think about institutional stuff quite a bit. And one thing, I mean, we've got all sorts of new stuff that we're planning and working on, working really hard on. We have a lot of people who are supporting it uh, behind the scenes as we build out some new stuff that will be revealed in, 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 in time. We've got like five or six projects that we're slowly working on and hoping to develop over the next several years, uh, some sooner, some later. But one of the biggest needs is capital. Now, we've got different methods and ways of trying to infuse capital into our institutions so that we can do what we hope will ultimately be a, give a lasting impact. But we do need support. So if you've been encouraged by any of the material that we've done, 
I'd really encourage you to consider giving even a small amount because those small amounts with a lot of people can add up. You know, if 100 people give $5, you, you've got, what, $500? Well, I should know math. I do math for a living, but I guess I have Excel on a calculator. That's 500 bucks. That can fund a significant amount of material. But then there could be, you know, 25 people who say, yeah, I've got actually $25. That's $625. And that's not a lot of people. And then you've got 10 people who could probably give 100 bucks. That's $1,000. So right there, we're over $2,000 that could be invested into building uh, the future of institutions that can encourage us to think deeply, to think carefully, to do it virtuously, to not do it in a um, in a way that is ultimately going to produce harm and bad fruit long term. Yeah, so that's my short little plea to go ahead and donate. I'll put a little link to donate to the London Lyceum. There's two places you can really do that. We have an actual just donation sort of link primarily that just straight up donor, but also our, the podcast host that we use also accepts donations. And the fees with both of them are basically the exact same. So I don't really, I'll put them both there. You can pick whichever one you want. If you want to be a recurring donor um, and get something out of it, like getting this, this uh, video in a podcast format, I encourage you to sign up for our exclusive content on the London Lyceum. You get that for $5 a month. I mean, that's, Think of, just think about it. Five bucks a month is like nothing. Um, it, it's less than you, you go to a really ex- fancy coffee shops and it's like you just get a pour over or a regular cup and it's like five bucks. So this is not expensive. But the more people who join in and link arms, the more the, you can really make something happen out of that. You do that, you get content for you get content back. So it's not just a giving and and thank you for your work bless you in the future, but it's actually you're benefiting from, from it and getting uh, resources. So I encourage you to check those things out. If you have other thoughts or ideas on institutions, um, let me know. I mean, I think a lot of this is pretty straightforward and simple, right? With a lot of the universities that we see, at least in, in America, I don't know what's going on outside uh, of America. Uh, I don't, cause I don't live there. But a lot of these institutions are being driven by administrators who just don't know what in the world they're doing. They're businessmen who are driven by the bottom line, um, understandably so, and don't understand the purpose of an intellectual institution and don't have a passion for the intellectual institution. They have a passion for the bottom line and for for having, living a nice life, whatever. Uh, they they might like some of the, the amenities that come with a university, maybe a great football team and the, the publicity that comes with that. They don't really care about developing individuals um, beyond just, you know, job placement. It's no longer about like actually forming humans into flourishing, happy, healthy peop- whole people um, who can think at high levels in a lot of different sophisticated ways, but also just have a fulfilled life. It's not about that. It's just about the bottom line. And that when that mentality uh, ends up overtaking, which it, to me it seems that this has been diseased all over, the spread all over our institutions in America, uh, from seminaries to universities, uh, we're in, we're in, we're in trouble, and we need new institutions to to help provide sort of an alternative counterculture vision to say no, it doesn't have to be that way. A lot of times, this group think makes you think this is the only way, and look, we've got all these this shortfalls in enrollment, we've got this problem, that problem. Uh, we need to market more on TikTok or whatever else these institutions think they need to do. Reels on Instagram. Cut it out. Stop the waste in the time. Actually get back to what is the purpose of a university. Reading, thinking, discussing with people, building relationships. Um, that's what's all that's what's gonna ultimately change people and encourage them and grow them and, and, and develop them. And if you're not gonna do that, then I think it's time for us to say, you know what, enough is enough. Let's go build something new. Okay, I'm done for now. I've got other thoughts. I'll leave them here for now. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, Do you agree, disagree? Do you think I missed something? Do you want me to talk more about this? Do you want me to talk less about it? Either way, I appreciate you guys tuning in to another episode of Kiff and Skeep, and I look forward to seeing you guys soon.